So why don't we have Mr. Amidar come up? He's the founder and executive di director of Idealist.org. We've been talking about Idealist. He's the man. He was born in Jerusalem, but he lived in Mexico. He also lived in Peru. He's become one of the most popular nonprofit resources on the web with more than 100,000 organizations and 1.4 million monthly visitors to the English, Spanish, and French sites. So very happy to meet him. We already actually did a Facebook, uh, Facebook Live a little bit earlier for Univision, and so welcome. Thanks again. Buenas tardes. So, ¿quién, ¿quién no habla español? ¿Quién habla español? ¿Quién habla español? Oh, come on. So, uh, no, I was asked, uh, Julie asked me to say a few words in Spanish. So, buenas tardes todos. Eh, sí, nací en Jerusalén. Me crié en Perú y en México, y luego volví a Israel, y ahora vivo acá. Un poco complicado. Yo estoy casado con una española, así que bueno. So that was the Spanish part. So I said that I was indeed born in Jerusalem, and then grew up in uh, Peru and Mexico. Now I live here, and I'm married to a Spanish woman, so it's all complicated. Um, anyway, so yes, so I started at this site called Idealist.org. Have some of you heard about it? Doesn't matter. Uh, it's a big website. There are a few things more boring in the whole world than talking about a website. So check it out. But basically, it's a website. It's the biggest matchmaking service in the world between nonprofits in every country in the world, 120,000 nonprofits, and then people that want to work for them, volunteer for them, intern with them, um, and they come and they meet there. Uh, 120,000 nonprofits, about 2 million people every month come to find ways to get involved. So if you're looking for anything, to uh, be helpful in any kind of nonprofit organization anywhere in the world, 20,000 in New York City, uh, go to idealist.org or idealistas.org in Spanish, and you'll find it there. Okay, so that's what I do. So um, why do I do that? So two quick uh, stories about why and then this whole idea of, of closing the gap between intention and action. So um, when I was about seven, my parents uh, took me to uh, Mexico City. And at the time, and I still think now, also, uh, there were many poor children begging in the streets. And as soon as I was like eight or nine years old, I didn't understand why. I was like a little social justice freak, and I was asking my parents, you know, sort of why, 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 why. I'm sure it was fun the first three times I asked, and probably what do you, what do you tell a nine-year-old who wants to know why there are poor kids in the streets? And I remember very distinctly uh, one evening we were driving through uh, the city. It was raining very hard. It was sort of dark. And my dad stopped at a uh, stoplight, at a red light, uh, traffic light. And suddenly, out of the rain and, and the dark, this little kid who was standing and begging at the traffic light, he must have been my age, uh, he came out and he put his hands on the windshield. And his, his face must have been sort of an inch from mine. And he somehow clearly wanted me to help him. And I was eight or nine years old. And i like, dude, I, I can't help you. Uh, and then my father just drove off. But I remember very clearly this feeling of wanting to do something to help this kid and not being able to do that. And that feeling stayed with me. And I think that's a feeling that all of you have in some way felt. I think all of us every day read the news, walk in the street, and see things that we would like to do or change. So that stayed with me. And that's one reason why I started the, this organization 20 years ago. Second story is um, when I was 15, we went back to um, Israel. It was the three years of high school. And then I joined the army, as you do in Israel when you're 18. So I spent three years um, in the army. And after a year there, this was a long time ago, uh, after a year there, um, my job was to uh, be on the border with Syria. And you've all seen, if you haven't been there, you've all seen these photos in the movies where basically minefields, barbed wire, towers, etc. And my job was to stay on this tower um, eight hours a day. Uh, you couldn't read, there were no cell phones. And I was supposed to essentially just like stare at a telescope on the other side at Syrian soldiers who were staring me uh, from the other side and hoping that I wouldn't have to fight them one day. So uh, one day I'm up on this tower and I suddenly had this idea that I remember I, I laughed out loud uh, because it was sort of childish but also true. And essentially, and that really got me to where I am here right now. Uh, essentially the idea was um, I had realized, you know, after a few months in my unit in, in the army that some of these guys that I was with were sort of good guys. And the way that I, th I thought about it then, that we thought about it, was there are some people in my unit who would probably give me their last pair of socks if I needed it, their last pair of dry socks on a rainy night. And there were a couple of guys who might steal my socks if I wasn't careful. Like that was the, the range of people. And so that day, uh, I was up on this tower. I'm looking through the telescope. It was a beautiful day. 
And far away in this valley, uh, the, the, the Syrian soldiers on the other side had a day off, I think, and they were playing soccer, they were playing football far away. And something about them playing sort of humanized them in my eyes in a way that was different. When you grow up in the conflict zone like Israel, the people on the other side aren't exactly human. They're human, but not exactly. If they were completely human, it's very hard to fight them. So you don't think of them as human, truly. They're Arabs, they're not human. Um, and I saw them for the first time and I thought, wait a second, in that unit, there must also be some people who would share my, their socks with me, and et cetera. It must be the same thing. And therefore, this whole fence between us is running the wrong way. It'd be much more sense for the people who would share their socks to be on the one side and the others to be on the other side. Uh, I never want to fight these people. I don't know them. Um, if I never in my life want to shoot anyone, never. If I had to shoot somebody, there's this guy in my unit who actually I know pretty well and I'd rather go and shoot him. So anyway, um, if I had to, because I don't really know them, I have nothing against them, whereas him, uh, anyway, so that totally got me obsessed with this idea of what can we do across all the borders, all the labels that separate us all over the world, and what do we have in common? So 30 years later, uh, tying the two stories together, the one thing that I think we all have in common, because we in this room might agree and disagree on many different issues, many different problems, we have many different concerns. The one thing that we have in common, actually, is our own gap between our intentions and the action that we actually take. In other words, if I ask you, uh, what do you want to do, what do you want to do, what do you want to do, you're going to say more whales, better education, less poverty, whatever. If I ask you what's stopping you from doing that, the obstacles that we're going to come up with are actually very similar. I don't know where to start, I don't know who to work with, what's it going to make a difference anyway, it feels weird to ask my neighbors, I'm afraid, people will think I'm stupid, I don't want to fail in public. All of those answers come up again, again, again. And so, ironically, while it's actually really difficult to form a coalition around all our issues because our issues are all different, it is possible to work together to overcome the obstacles that we have in common. And that's what we want to do next with Ideal, is how do you create a global community that helps people everywhere find out what they want to do and then do it by focusing on the obstacle, by removing the obstacle. You want to meet your neighbors? Great. You're afraid of doing something? Why are you afraid? Let's help you be not afraid. So it's helping people move from intention to action to build the kind of world that we all, I think, realize is possible. And um, yes, I'm not going to mention politics, although I will close with one thing, which is that these are interesting times. And I just realized, I was looking at, at, at something on the news, that I don't know what's going to happen next, but it will not be boring, which is one small consolation. Uh, I just saw that, um, that man in the tower, let's call him the man in the tower. The man in the tower uh, today, I guess, had a conversation or a couple of days ago with uh, the Prime Minister of uh, the UK, of Britain, Theresa May. And I don't know if you, those of you who know, there's like a three or four hundred year tradition and diplomacy about how inter, how visits are arranged between heads of state, right? It's a very big deal. So he told her on the phone, next time you're in town, let me know. Next time you're in town, let me know. So it'll be, it won't be boring. So thank you for listening to all that. Thanks for having us. Um, if there are any questions, let me know. Does it make sense? Have you guys felt in your life that you want to do something and something is stopping you? Go for it. Questions? I think there are mics on both sides. Or I'll just hear you. If you speak loudly and clearly. Just to confirm, the website is idealistas.org. Yes, so in English, idealist.org, and in Spanish, idealistas.org. Yeah. Or oh, idealist.org if you want that. Anyway. Yes, French as well. If I might ask a question and maybe you can answer in Spanish because we're also transmitting some of this stuff. Um, it's important for us to understand that not only you're doing goodwill as you're connecting with all these social organizations, nonprofits, mm -hmm. but also people are getting paid and they're working and they're getting jobs and you're connecting. So that's also a way to tackle unemployment and other things. So not only are you doing something good, but you're also doing... So sería importante que dijera en español que aclarara, porque a veces la gente como que se pierde cuando le dicen esto de conectarse por la internet, usted sabe. Entonces, sí. de, lo, de lo que ustedes hacen y la importancia y la relevancia que tiene y cómo es que el mundo cada día es un pañuelo, ¿no? Cada vez más chico. Definitely. So I'll, I'll quickly in English and then slowly in Spanish, just longer. So in English, um, Idealist is also essentially the number one uh, nonprofit job site in the States. And 
People sometimes think about the sector, nonprofit sector, and they think that nonprofits don't have employees. In fact, there's 10 million of them, 10 million employees in the sector. So at any given point, we have 15,000 jobs on the site that are open across the country. So if you're looking for a job or if your daughter is looking for a job, tell her. Um, idealistas, sí, definitivamente hay trabajo, no solo acá, sí, en, to en todo el mundo latinoamericano, en Sudamérica, en España. Eh, hay voluntariado y hay trabajo, hay puesto de trabajo en ONGs en todos lados. Entonces pueden venir, buscar por país, por palabra y encontrar cualquier cosa que estén buscando. I just want to um, say thank you to Emil because 15 years ago I got my job, who I'm still in, yes. through Idealist. So well, you were you were like 12 years old. What do you mean 15 years no, ago? It's been 15 years. I'm not gonna tell my age, but um, my mom said that you can say whatever if you're a woman. So okay. Cool. Uh, but 15 years ago, you know, you, it has been just five years. And Idealist was uh, in, and I was in college. And, and I was working at the Career Center, and it came on the information with Idealist. And I'm still registered with you. I still get the awesome. jobs, the programs across the board. I still see all the information, just in case I need it. <laughs> we did not plant her. We did not plant her. No. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you. And you also spoke at one of my fellowships. So thank you so much. You always have been an inspiration. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having us. Gracias.